Welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Jason Phillips. He's a Simpson County Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources. You know, mm -hmm. I think people are now starting to become more familiar with poison hemlock, right. and people are concerned that they might have it in their yard or in their field. Mm -hmm. What exactly are we looking for? It's invasive by nature. So fence rows in wooded areas, it doesn't tolerate heavy mowing. Uh, so typically you wouldn't see it in your yard, mm -hmm. but you might see it in an adjacent fence row, or you might see it um, even in creeping into hay fields, which is obviously a concern uh, when we're cutting that toxic material and putting it in, in a bale form for livestock to consume. Yeah, because a lot of our other plants, once they dry, they lose some of the properties, but poison hemlock is not like that. It still is toxic even in the dried form. It, it still is toxic. It is reduced just a bit, but not but not much. And see, that's when the animals can't control how much of it that they're consuming, because if there's a lot in that bale, they're just eating from that bale of hay. So if there's a lot of poison hemlock in there, then obviously they're gonna be consuming that poison hemlock. Now, it's in the name, poison's in mm -hmm. the name, but are, are people to be concerned about this plan? I think that we've had several calls of people being concerned <clears throat> that it might make them sick. Okay, so if you touch it, you can get a rash, you can get an, a skin irritation. So I would first warn folks, be, be cautious mm -hmm. and uh, the best thing first is don't touch it, so we need to tell you obviously how to identify it, but definitely don't consume it, which I don't think many people are gonna be out here trying to eat poison hemlock, but that's the number one issue, ingestion. But be careful about, about touching it as well. Now, poison hemlock, it's got uh, very dissected leaves. It looks a lot like a, a carrot. Mm -hmm. Very, it can easily be uh, confused with wild carrot. Uh, weed, which is also known as Queen Anne's Lace. Mm -hmm. But uh, poison hemlock, when it elongates, it's a biennial. So when you see the stem, it's going to have purple splotches on it. It's a hollow stem. And uh, so, and those are really the telltale signs yeah. because there are some other lookalikes. Elderberry, mm -hmm. um, some of our native plants have that big white kind of flower on them. Right. But to really tell the the hollow stem, the purple splotches on there, and you know, people we a lot of times say bring that sample mm -hmm. in so we can see. Um, but if you are having to remove it or touch it, just make sure you wear gloves. Right. Wear some kind of protection between you and the plant. Mm -hmm. But you can definitely send us a picture uh, or bring it into the extension office and we can help you to identify that plant. Yeah, and just when the picture comes in, it's always helpful if we're getting pictures of the stalk because mm -hmm. if you just get the top right. or if it's from far away, sometimes it's hard for us to identify. For sure. The stem's important, close-up pictures, clear pictures are important. I know a lot of people, if they find it in their hay fields or close by, they, they want to get rid of it, mm -hmm. right? But is this the time of year that we need to control? It's really not the best time of year. Uh, it's got a great big time taproot, it metabolizes those those chemicals a lot of times that we spray on them when they get big. Uh, it is a biennial, so October, November, and then in the spring, we're talking about probably April, uh, would be the best times of year to control it. 2,4-D, a 2,4-D based product, uh, if it's small, if it's in the rosette stage, typically that will take care of it. But if it's bigger, you may want to go to something uh, like 2,4-D uh, and dicamba or 2,4-D and triclopure, like a, a a weed master or a crossbow. If something, if it starts getting bigger, uh, obviously it's going to be a little bit harder to control that to control that weed with just 2,4-D alone. But you know, some people, they're, they're a little alarmed by it. So if they did want to remove it, mechanical removal, or if you just mark that spot, it's going to be there in the, in the fall. That's right. I mean, if you've seen it in a particular place before, it's going to be there. Uh, and you can treat it at a, at a more preferable time if you're looking to use chemical treatment. And I think it's just situational. If you see a few plants uh, growing in a particular area, you know, you can remove that um, with, a, with a machete or something like that and then maybe come back later because that's not going to kill the root system. Mm -hmm. But you can at least remove the top growth and then come back at a more ideal time and spray that with a 2,4-D based product. Thanks for watching and have a great day.